Hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited. Probably the most excited I've been since I guess like I toured the Kia Carnival because I have the brand new 2022 Jeep Wagoneer. It's not the Grand Wagoneer, but that is okay. Cause you know what? I'm just as excited about this one. The cars are actually identical on the inside as far as like car seat setup and things are concerned. What you're getting with the Grand Wagoneer is you're getting a better engine and you're getting more technology and convenience features in the interior. But from a car seat standpoint, they're the same car. And that's probably why you're here. Because if you want to see like how this car performs, like climbing mountains and things, you're gonna have to find a different corner of the internet. Cause I brought some car seats. I brought a stroller, I brought a diaper bag, I bought some cups, and I want to see how this car will work for a family. If this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and comment below about which car I should tour next. Let's just get started. I'm so freaking excited. I feel like I'm on a first date. Okay, let's start with the front end. We've got the seven slots. Very Jeep. Love to see it. I love consistency in a brand. I think that looks awesome. We've got Wagoneer spelled out right here. Some really nice hood lines. I mean, really look at that. This hood really commands the road. I really, really like it. If we take a look at our headlights, nothing crazy, but you know, interesting enough, we've got some really great chrome pieces that go here and then down here as well. I think she's got a really, really stylish front end. It's got just enough going on without too much going on. Let's move kind of to her side profile. A little bit more going on. This is where she, this is where she loses me just a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of these U-shaped windows that you see right here. I just don't think it gives it quite a clean and luxurious look. I mean, this car is not a Jeep. This car is competing with an Escalade, a Yukon XL, a Lincoln Navigator. This is a full-size SUV. So for them to like round out the windows, I don't know. It's kind of like Kia Soul vibes a little bit. Like, I don't know why I feel that way. I just am not a fan. Comment below what you think. But besides the windows, I do like her side profile. You know, we've got some great roof rails, kind of like dual color. We've got chrome and black as well. We've got some running boards right here. These ones are not power. They're just there all the time. Just fine. It's one less thing to break. And if we move around to her back and we've got some wraparound taillights, has a chrome bar that goes all the way across it. Normally I don't love chrome bars, but I like how this one's pretty subtle. I also love how if you look in the headlights, it kind of mimics like the front end of the grill. It's kind of have like those seven slots again, but there might be more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there's a few more, but it kind of has the same vibe. We've got Wagoneer double space right here. And then same thing with like these like curved out windows. That's just not my favorite. I like my lines a little cleaner. It's also interesting. There's absolutely like no overhang. So like there would, there was nowhere to put the wiper. You see some other big SUVs have a little bit of an overhang and they can tuck the wiper underneath there. To me, it looks like she's like missing something. Like I'm missing, I'm missing something. We've got a nice little ledge right here. We've got another chrome bar down here. So overall, let me be, I mean, I like the exterior. I like it more than I don't like it. Just those windows. I don't know. They're kind of getting to me. But let's get into that interior because that is what I'm really excited about. So before I bring you on the inside, let's take a second and let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is pricing. Like I said, this is not a Jeep. This is a luxury car. Now this is just the Wagoneer. This is the Series 2. And this one has an MSRP of about $73,000. What? That's expensive. Now, is it expensive compared to an Escalade? No. Is it expensive compared to a Yukon? Yeah. Or a Ford Expedition? Yeah. So she's kind of falling somewhere in between. Obviously, once you get up to the Grand Wag Wagoneers, you are in the six figures for a Jeep. So like I said, she's like her own, she's like her own thing. She's like an Escalade. So let's kind of break down this interior because I mean, if I'm looking at it through the eyes of comparing to one of those really luxury cars, you know what? I'm kind of impressed. I think the interior elements are actually really beautiful. I love that they have this wood trim, but then it has gloss over it. We've got some great chrome, some like nice black plastic over here as well that has a nice shine to it. We've got some contrast stitching with like a little bit of leather right there. Our side cubbies, great, not bad. We'll take it. We've got the Alpine, Alpine sound system in here. So overall, 
some really pretty designs. Let's get you on the other side and we'll kind of see how it continues to impress me. Okay, so let's start breaking down some of this interior. Let's start with our steering wheel. It's an amazing, huge leather wrap steering wheel. I love the flat bar down here. We've got really great steering wheel controls. We've got everything from like our audio controls to our Bluetooth to our automated cruise control. Like we love a final detail. Like it literally has like a mini Wagoneer on here instead of just a generic car. Very similar to what it was in the Bronco. Like it's a Wagoneer. I think that's a cute little touch. I. I don't think that's darling. A completely digital display. Now, when you get the Grand Wagoneer, they're saying that you get up to 75 inches of screens. Sounds like a lot of microfiber cloth cleaning that would need to be done. So on this one, just the regular Wagoneer, we've got this digital display and we've got this screen right here. Honestly, I mean, are more screens more to look at? Sure. I feel good. I feel like I've got everything. I'm pretty excited about it. So we've got heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, super easy to access right here. We've got a completely colorized display that is super responsive. I actually really like it. I also like that you can control your climate control from in here, but they've also pulled it out so you could also do it here. So like if you don't want to like fumble with the display, you can easily access it here. One thing I thought was kind of weird is when I was driving around, like here's the volume and like here's the tune. And like keep in mind, I'm I couldn't reach it. So there's other ways to do it. I mean, you could like, I guess you can do it here. And like, maybe you're not tuning your radio that much. I don't know. I just thought I needed to point that out. Okay, moving on, we've got everything is totally like just embellished in this black piano glass. Love it. Fingerprint city. Keep a microfiber cloth in your towel. Keep a microfiber cloth in your towel. Keep a microfiber cloth in your car. We've got a nice little cubby right here with a 12 volt USB, USB-C, aux cord. Oh, so that's a total of two USBs, two USB-Cs, an aux cord and a 12 volt with a wireless charger right here. And like, I love that you can just close that. If we move down here, we've got some more of our safety features. We've got our auto start stop, our blind spot, our traction control, things like that. Here is our little shifter, cute. Different sports modes, it's kind of fun put it in sport and then we talk about our cup holders so we've got two cup holders and then we've got a little phone slot in between them and then whatever this is I guess that's another phone phone slot oh that's kind of fun so phone slot phone slot cup holders cup holders cute in here first of all this is so cute I love this gray plastic I love how high up the center console is too you know for if nothing else but for a car lunch I mean in these pandemic times like we're eating lunches in our car it's a great school pickup put your salad out here it's like a little table I think that's so awesome you can push this back though we've got another USB USB-C a nice little like place to put your phone if I pop in here it brings us to a huge center console huge I mean look at that here here's a cup for reference what that is exciting now in the higher trim levels or in the wagon or this comes in with a refrigerated cool box honestly refrigerated center consoles don't do much for me I'd rather have the space okay I'm having fun. I'm loving everything that's up here. I'm very excited to get back there. So let's check out the back seat. Okay, so now before I get my car seats and my strollers and all the things, let's talk about what's happening and let's get a shot of me in here as well. So I was so excited to find a bench seat. I just like to show you guys a bench seat because every other reviewer out there is showing the captain's chairs. The bench seat, one offers you another seat. If, this, if you're trying to haul a lot of kids in here, let's not pay more to lose a seat. I'm excited about the bench seat and the bench seat looks fabulous. So let's pop on in. First things first, I have this seat set for myself. As you know, I'm pretty tall, about six feet. Plenty of clearance. Interesting things, no sunshades, okay. Okay. Vents down here, not on the ceiling, which is like so crazy because there's like so much headliner. I would have loved to have them up here. But I will say here, is better than just here. So at least we have two sets, but I do prefer ceiling vents for rear facing kids specifically, but that's that. Nice little leather back pocket. Seats back here are pretty comfortable. I can move to the middle seat. Seats can slide forward and backwards. I like that all of these seats are separate. That makes it a lot easier to install car seats, especially multiple car seats. As you can see, every seat has its own set of lower anchors and then obviously they all have their own seat belts and tether anchors as well. In the third row, three more seats, making this a what? Eight passenger car. 
In the third row, we have set a set of lower anchors in this driver's seat right here, tether anchors across the bench. That's a total of four sets of lower anchors and six tether anchors. hey -oh! That's exciting. You know what that is? Exciting. As far as like my comfort and everything's concerned, the seats are fine. I mean, the car feels nice. The car feels nice. Um, down here, I have my own climate control. We've got an outlet, two USBs, a USB-C, and then another 12 volts. So some good connectivity down there. Um, no cup holders back here. We've got like kind of like some lame door things, and then you could obviously pull this one down too for a cup holder as well. So would love cup holders here, Jeep. It's just like put two more, you know what I mean? For yesterday's iced coffee. Okay, let me show you something so exciting and then I'm gonna get my car seats. So third row access when you have a bench seat is always a topic of discussion, especially if you're gonna be having car seats. So I wanna show you how you can access the third row of the Wagoneer and it's very simple to do. There's a button up here. It's power, it pushes it forward and then you can slide it. Here's one thing I don't like about that. I wish very badly the button was also down here because who's accessing the third row? A seven year old. You know what I mean? Like put it down here also. This is great for adults and the third row needs that, but for like children to be getting out of it, I wish it was also down here. Now, this is what we call a car seat friendly tilt. It's very exciting, why? Because you could technically access the third row when the car seat was installed with the lower anchors. However, this is not like, I love this feature, but I just do wanna caution against, car seats have lower anchor weight limits. So just be aware, it's not gonna work for every forward facing car seat, it's not gonna work for every situation, but if you do have a car seat installed with the lower anchors or maybe an infant seat base installed with the lower anchors, you would easily be able to access the third row. I guess I'll just hop back there while we're here. Okay. Woohoo! Okay, here we are, here we are, here we are. Okay, how many times can I say okay? All right, so here's a shot of me in the third row. Give you an idea of my knee space. So with this seat pushed all the way back, are you freaking kidding to my knee clearance still? A six foot tall adult, hey oh. That's exciting. Three separate seats back here, middle head restraints. Thank you. Who doesn't have middle head restraints? Quiz. Which other large SUVs don't have middle head restraints? Oh, let me think. Suburban, Yukon, Escalade. Why do we need middle head restraints? Because if I'm sitting in this seat and we get in a collision, if I don't have a middle head restraint, I have nothing protecting me against whiplash. It is extremely dangerous. So good job, Jeep, for putting those in there. Okay, as far as my amenities are concerned, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. This is the tiniest vent literally I've ever seen in my life. USB, USB-C, and a little square cup holder on either side. I mean, this is the worst ventilation I've ever seen, except for no ventilation, but that, this is a close second, wow. Besides that though, I mean, I am impressed with like the size of the third row. I mean, it feels good. Seats can recline a little bit. Should we just get some car seats in here and like see what we're really dealing with though? I have brought some props will show and tell, and I brought two car seats. Now, every car seat setup is different, so I highly suggest you contact a certified child passenger safety tech for your specific car seat setup. I'm bringing some seats just to give you an idea of spacing. I have a Graco extended fit installed forward facing with the seat belt, and a Kleckling installed rear facing, obviously, with the lower anchors. The exciting thing is, I can sit in between them. Ah! And I could get between them, first of all. Hello. This is exciting, though. I've got plenty of room. I think you could easily fit another car seat here. I'm pretty jazzed about this. So plenty of room here, still great clearance here, and this seat's pushed very far back. So I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a high score. High score. Good job, Jeep. I'm impressed. Okay, let's take a look see at the trunk, shall we? So something to note about the Wagoneer. This is it. There's no you there's no extended wheelbase, there's no like Expedition Max or Yukon XL. This is it. This is all the trunk space we get, but it's okay. It's okay. I brought an Up Baby Vista stroller, third row up, fits like a glove. I mean, that's, that's great. That will work. Let's kind of explore a little bit with her down though. I think it's about 28 cubic feet with the third row up. You know, a little bit of extra storage down here. Nothing crazy, but something to note. Go. Something I do really like is when the manufacturers have these things like that stick up like this. So like no matter what level I put it on, it stays up. I don't know, just something to note. Um, to put this third row down, oops, I forgot to put the headrest down. 
I mean, with the third row down, we are really talking about some good trunk space. I'm so happy and I love, love, love the tether anchors and all the seating positions. You need tether anchors for forward-facing car seats. Obviously, kids are in forward-facing car seats for a long time, so a lot of families will have multiple kids in forward-facing car seats, so we love to see it. All right, y'all, so that is going to wrap up my 2022 Jeep Wagoneer tour. Guys, she did not disappoint. I love it. I freaking love it. I think it's a such a good... I mean, it's expensive, don't get me wrong, but... I'm pretty excited about it. And if you're wondering how it drives, we have a whole video dedicated to the drive. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss that. But overall, I'm so excited to hear your thoughts, but I'm pretty freaking excited about her. I really am. So thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time. All right, guys, let's build my very own 2022 Jeep Wagoneer. Now, again, I, this was just the Wagoneer, not the Grand Wagoneer. So that's why we're seeing some lower MSRPs. So the two options that they give you is a Series 2 and a Series 3. MSRP difference is not about $5,000. Um, I did the Series 2. I felt pretty good about what's on there. I mean, the main thing you get, which, first of all, they do a good job of kind of breaking it down. You know, the thing that I got that I was excited about was the heads-up display, but I think I'm going to just stick with this one because I loved this car and want to live in a world where I could afford it. Not that I could afford this, but you know what I'm saying. I, just, I want to try to be as realistic as possible um, because I think the one I did, I mean, I found it very well equipped. It's still pretty expensive. Like if you're comparing it to, if you take it feature to feature and you're comparing it to like the Ford Expedition, it's quite a bit more. Um, but I think it's kind of trying to play in a different category. So anyway, I'm going to do the Series 2. I am going to go up to the 4x4. Let's be at $72,000. <laughs> and now let's see what else I could do. Paint colors are always my favorite. Okay, I like to see it from the side. I don't know why. I'm kind of feeling this. So white's the only free color. Free. White's the only zero dollar color. I do not like it in black. Am I crazy to like kind of like this color? I'm going to go with that. I think it's kind of cute. Um, option two, change some wheels. I never really mess with that because I just think those wheels are fine. This comes on it. Um, let's move over to, over to interior so we can get the black or the beige. I think I'm going to do the beige because look, I like how like there's still like some black accents. That looks good. And then I could get this front passenger interactive display for an extra 1100 bucks, which makes this a screen, I believe. I guess I can't get out of it though. How do I get out of this? I'm not going to do that, though. Okay. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Convenience group. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I think I'm going to need to add this. Because then I get the heads-up display. I get heated second-row seats. I get surround-view camera. I get the second-row sunshades. I mean, am I literally going to buy this for the sunshades in the surround-view camera? The answer is yeah. Do I get... Do I literally have to add this to get the sunroof too? Oh, they are just nickel and diamond you, aren't they? I'm not going to get the sunroof. I am going to go up to this convenience. Rear seat entertainment. Ugh. No, go buy two iPads. I'm not doing that. Okay, second row seating. Um, So I don't want captain's chairs, so I want to keep my bench seat because the bench was fabulous. Okay, is that it? This is so easy summary okay so let's bring my jeep wagoneer to an msrp of seventy eight thousand four hundred and thirty five dollars which is a lot but when i originally heard the wagoneer was going to be upwards of a hundred grand which is obviously for the grand wagoneer but the fact that i could like get into this one at seventy eight thousand is still a lot of money but you know it's it's a little bit easier to swallow